All right, I've got some old bifaces that I'm going to try to rework into new bifaces and preforms. <clears throat> okay, so I, I, I don't know when I made these, or if I even made these myself. They look like mine, but I found them in the landscaping here, looking through all my rocks. So, <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can rework them. There might be a reason why I just tossed them into the landscaping. It might be because they're not that great in terms of quality stone that is <clears throat> okay so let's see um, yeah in the past these videos where I rework stuff seem to be, seem to be pretty popular so what happened with this one I don't know it looks like uh, it looks like I might have been trying for something larger and it just got too small. A lot of times that's what causes me to toss these into the landscaping. It's high quality shirt. So it's good stuff. So far. Yeah, it might even be heat treat, but I don't know. I don't know. So what am I doing? How do I fix this? I just whittle it down. Try not to remove too much. It looks like high grade material. Yeah. Whittle it down and get used to the material. And then once I'm used to the material, I'll start removing some large thinning flakes but I've got to get used to the material first yeah so I just start picking at it there's some insect stuff on here and it's got water in it looks like yep Or water on it. Yeah, Let's, I'm gonna try to speed up this process. I might zone out so I can speed up. Yeah. How often do I do this? Actually, I don't do this very often. Yeah. But when I do, I try to pick good material that's easily napped right and then if it's not easily napped I throw it in the heat treat and then try again but a lot of times I'll just work with rock to point type stuff and I won't refurbish old bifaces I'll just throw them in a box nowadays with the broken bifaces so I guess I don't know how much this helps new guys but I got a I got good response uh, last time I did a refurbish but I was I was trying to refurbish or I was working on different kinds of bifaces than these these are relatively flat and they're not all messed up and it's not bad material um, so I'm not sure exactly how beneficial this is but I wanted to I gotta do this anyway so I wanted to get it on video And it looks like I might be able to do this quickly. Let's see. Yeah, it's warm enough now I can take my glove off. I got the space heater going. My hands got very cold all of a sudden. All right, it's above 50 now. It doesn't take long, it's, it's pretty good. It doesn't take long to heat up the shop. Just a few, 10 minutes or so. So 
So what's going on there? There's a it's a scooping it out. That means it's too much inward force. Or the angle is the angle of the striking area is not exactly conducive to the flaking. So it, it's directing the force inward too much. Or something like that. There's various things that can cause the scooping. There's not just one thing. And it could be something I'm not familiar with. Yeah. What causes mistakes? Sometimes it's something I'm not familiar with. Or haven't explored. Or tested. Or thought about. I'm also trying to see if there's a difference between this stuff that's been out in the water, in the weather, in the rain, and all that. If it's different under high humidity uh, compared to uh, West Texas where there's very low humidity. Let me see if it naps differently. I'll have to probably nap a, a lot of stuff. Hundreds of pounds of stuff and kind of get a feel for it. Why don't I just soak the flint and chert in water and just nap it waterlogged? Well, that means I got to get some containers and get them filled up. How long do I let them sit? Does it matter? What if I don't know this a difference? Do I put them back in and try again? Put them in for another month or two? Another day or two? And if I do put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out, does that affect it? Like I might forget one day to put them back in the water and they dry out a little bit. And then I try napping them. Can they dry out a little bit or do they need to stay soaking wet? To, uh, is there a difference between soaking wet, slightly wet, and, uh, and then mostly dry? All the way dry? Like, how do I tell what's what? How long do I need to dry them out to compare? None of that matters. Just do it. Well, uh, for it to be something useful in flint napping, there has to be some kind of measurable result. Can't be all just speculation and maybe it's this, maybe it's that. It might feel a little bit different. I'm not sure. Or, yeah, it does feel a lot different. Here's the exact formula for doing it with this material. You don't have this material? Well, I guess all that work I just did didn't doesn't pertain to you because you don't have this material. Yeah. And how do you know if you do have this material? Is it the same napability as what I got? What if the water here is laden with minerals and the water you have is not? Or opposite, the water I have is very pure and yours is laden with minerals. Does that make a difference? You know, you can leave your stuff in water for three weeks and it doesn't get absorbed as well as the water that I'm using for three weeks. Is there a difference in how it absorbs according to how much minerals it already has dissolved in the water? I mean, on and on and on and on. And you might say, well, that doesn't matter. Just do it and then pretend that it's working better. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's what I think they're doing. They're just doing it and then pretending it's working better. That way they'll get more attention. Yeah. Or... You know, spark conversations, and those conversations drive attention to their little activities. Yeah. What if I add dye to the water? 
so I can see the depth of penetration of the the actual liquid. Has anyone tried adding dye to the water so they know just how much it's penetrating? What if it's just the top surface? I'd like like a thirty second of an inch in on the surface doesn't go all the way through even after six months. How do you know? I don't I've never seen anyone use dye in the water to see how how it has penetrated or to what extent. You know, if it's, if you put it in a really dark dye and you take it out and uh, you start napping it and you only see a light colored dye, that means there's not much soaking up of the water. All these things, it might not seem like it matters, but if you want to have actual results that can be duplicated, you've got to be specific. You got to make sure that it can be duplicated. Exactly under what conditions are you napping it? Or it, if it can't be duplicated, the results are not going to matter. Yeah, I tried it, but it didn't work. Well, is it exactly the same? I don't know because. I really don't know if it's exactly the same because I don't have all the data. There might be some stuff missing that I don't know that I'm not doing. Someone might have told me this is a different rock than it really is. You know, there could be all kinds of things going wrong with the experiment. Or it could be very simple, I don't know. Personally, I've never noticed a, a, a difference. Not at all. It, you know, if it naps, it naps. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not really sure if it makes any, if, it, uh, if it's relevant because all stones are different. Even when you get flakes off the same nodule. Some of those flakes are good and some of them are not. I just think it's, it's, yeah, my bias is, is, uh, I need to see something actually concrete in order for, so to speak, in order for me to, to say that there is a difference. It's gotta be, a, it's gotta be for sure, for sure. Can't be all. It can't be something that uh, generates more questions than it answers. Yeah. Why do I bring it up? Well, because it comes up in conversation sometimes. You know, I get speaking with people on emails. Oh, by the way, have you tried watching this video where they soak it in water? They do it in Germany. Yeah, I've seen that video and videos like it. Yeah. They swear by it. They swear. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. As long as you you're napping it, then you're napping it. A lot of times I can't get a hold of Danish flint, like what they're using, or German flint, or whatever. Is it the same as what I'm using? We don't know. Anyways, so I reworked this. It's just basically thinning it down. Yeah, let's move on to the next. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff I need to nap on video to finish up. Let's see. I've also got this one from a past video. Finish on video. This is. Uh, the lighting is so weird here. It's to me this is uh, reddish on video. It looks a little bit like it's tan color. Probably because the bulbs are soft white, soft, uh, soft light, or a type of bulb that's not white light but yellowish light. Anyway, it's kind of reddish to me. Anyway, I'm gonna finish that one up on video. 
I'm going to finish this one I just did on video. I'm going to finish this one that I did last night on video. And let me finish refurbishing these. How am I going to upload all these videos? I don't know. I got to go to the library. They should be open this Monday. Although I can't go to the library this Monday. I got to take my dad to an appointment this Monday. Tomorrow. So I got to wait to, to upload the videos. I'm going to try to upload a few tonight. If they go through. Sometimes cell service. The cell phone service is good. Sometimes it isn't. Uh, it's been kind of cruddy lately. But, uh, yeah, if I keep these videos short, under 20 minutes, uh, they upload in a reasonable amount of time. And then when I got some free time, I'll go to the library. As long as they're not closed for some weird federal holiday, I can upload them there. It takes only five minutes to upload a 20 minute video. When I'm there. Here at the house, it's up to four hours or even six hours for a silly 20 minute video. Yeah, same problem I had last year. Same problem as last time. But I like going to the library here. I like it. You know how libraries smell, right? They smell like books. Oh, yes. And the libraries around here smell like old wood. Like oak. It smells like a bunch of oak barrels are aging in the library. And I like it. Yeah. Why does it smell like oak? I don't know. They must have used a lot of oak in the construction of the finished trim on a lot of these buildings yeah or the furniture furniture is probably oak too although there's a lot of modern materials in there I don't know anyway it just smells like victory <laughs> it smells like success Neighbors are doing something. I heard a door slam. I should stop paying attention to the, the background noises. Yeah. It's a goldfish bowl. I can't help it. I can't unhear these things. Some of you might be saying to yourselves, I don't know what you're doing because you're not explaining how to thin it. <laughs> I know I'm not explaining how to thin it. You just got to watch. Yeah. Three eighths inch steel rod. It's rounded. It's, you know, rounded like a actually se perfect semicircle if I can do it. This one's a perfect semicircle. This one's a little bit sharper. When it's not worn down, I try to make this a little bit more pointy. That way I can get, you know, smaller flakes in these tighter areas, like near the tip. Uh, I don't want to hit too hard. I just want to knock off these little bitty flakes. This is actually high-grade material also. Yeah, high-grade material. Right, so I can take these little flakes easily. Now, with difficult material... Step fractures are extremely common near the tip, but this is good stuff. I don't know what it is. I don't know. And I can't tell if it's heat treat or not unless it has changed color somehow. And I can tell it's obviously heat treated because it's like a purpley color or something that's odd. Or it's got a lot of gloss to it or something like that. This might be heat treated. 
I don't know. Anyway, if I want small flakes, I go with the smaller tip. If I want larger flakes, I go with the larger tip. It makes it easier. Although I, I can make smaller flakes with this and big flakes with the other. It depends on how I strike the striking area. If I move down far enough, if I'm up high, usually I'm up pretty high removing flakes, like, you know, like, like let's see, like right there. If I want to remove a little flake, I go down a little bit. I'm not so high up on the platform, on the striking area. I go down a little bit to remove little flakes. And with this one, the same thing. Normally, I'm up on the edge the same distance as the other side with a normal strike. But if I want a little tiny itty bitty flakes, I go down. And if I want a bigger flake, I go up. Yeah. You didn't know? Now you know. <laughs> yeah. Simple. I wish it was that simple. Sometimes it's not that simple. What makes it not so simple? Well, if it's a very crushy edge, you can't go down very low. You can't, you know, you can't get away with just taking a little bit off and getting expecting to get a good flake because it won't do it. If it's crunchy material, it's not going to want to send in, it's not going to want to support, you know, a lot of force behind the, the flake removal. So you can take long flakes, it's going to stop and crunch instead of allowing you to push through. Yeah. Now, sometimes the inability to push through is due to inexperience. So you're not going to know as a new guy, is it the rock making me suffer or I'm just dumb? <laughs> you're not going to know when you're new. Uh, most I tell most people, if you if you want me to be honest with you, you've got to nap at least 400 pounds of material before you start asking me questions. Because napping 400 pounds of material is going to answer a lot of questions. You'll go, oh, you know what? I'm getting the hang of it now, but there's a few things I need to I need to get straight. That's fine, but if you're brand new and you've napped you know 25 pounds of stone you know one large flat rate box or something and you're going i don't know what's wrong i tried to pressure flake and it's blah, blah, blah. yeah i can't help you you've got to go a little bit further on your own so you can figure out if you know figure out if it's you like sometimes you're you haven't built up the muscle strength and you'll after a while you'll get stronger and you start to press off nice long flakes and you'll go oh, okay i was just weak i just didn't have the musculature but my question now is what do you use to grind the edge because my edges are crushing okay that's a that's fine you can either you can try using a file a diamond needle file they're called needle files if you really want to get precise with the grinding for pressure flaking i recommend needle file yeah it's cheating but it works really really well and then sharpen up the tip of the flaker and then start with a sharp tip and see if it works if it doesn't work all that great uh dull it a little bit or maybe sharpen it a little bit more it, just try different variations on the sharpness on the tip and sometimes if you uh, square it off to where you look at it and it's a square up here instead of round perfectly round if you look at it and it, it's a square tip because you you've put facets on the side like you file it this way turn it exactly what is it 45 no exactly 90 degrees and file it and turn it exactly 90 degrees and file it and you've got four facets and then you file the tip flat some guys have a lot of success with that type of tip you can try that too i don't get that fancy because i don't like working that hard on the tips i'll just make do-do with what i got with tips that are easily sharpened 
and easily maintain. I might be able to get better results if I put facets on this or use copper or use a, a special type of copper. My friend uh, Melvin gave me some uh, copper alloy of some sort or a special type of copper that he says works really well for him. I still have not tried that copper. He gave me some copper rods of, I don't know what. I can't remember what type of copper it is, but it's supposed to be fancy pants copper. Anyway, I could be getting better results if I was using the fancy pants copper. Yeah. But I don't. I don't normally use stuff that requires a lot of preparation i like my 16 penny nail in the oak dowel one inch oak dowel and 16 penny nail i put this down here i, I put these markings one so they i know it's mine and number two uh the red is what i normally use the other if i just have a single black line it's the odd stuff so this is copper which is not the usual where is the where is my other one? see on my spatula tools I lost my spatula tool flaker where's my spatula tool yeah spatula tool don't have the black line see where's my small one okay here's the small one no black line so I try to coat it so that I can see if it's facing away from me, like if I don't see the tip right away, like if the tip is on that side, I can say, oh, okay, this is, this is not normal. It has black and white, the black and red. This is the, you see the copper or spatula tool. So if it's not facing like this toward me, I learned to try to speed up the process of going to, for my tools. Yeah. It speeds it up a little bit, believe it or not. Even that little bit of time speeds it up because there's a lot of shifting back and forth sometimes between different tools. And also I keep everything in a big pile, one big pile. It's already 27 minutes. I'm trying to figure out if I can thin this no, it's not thinning very well with pressure. It's crunching right there. If the angle is not right, you might say, yeah, I know. I, I need to, not the angle, but the edge is not right. I got to drop the edge more that way. I know. But I was trying to do it anyway, taking a shortcut. Because to move the edge that way, I got to lose width on it. I didn't want to lose too much width because width is what I use to build up an edge. Yeah, if I have to build up the edge, I gotta lose width. So I just try to preserve it unless I have to have to get rid of the width. In this case, I did have to, but I don't like it because it gets way too narrow. I could probably thin it without losing that much width if I was using just percussion. Because with percussion, I don't have to move the whole edge. You can just move a little bit of it here and there and take off bigger flakes and wider. Some guys say, I don't have any trouble getting wide flakes with pressure. Yeah, I, I do have trouble. It wears me out. I could do three or four and then I start getting tired. Yeah, I'm getting old or something. I know. You can't touch me. You can't teach me nothing because you're old and I'm not. I'm going to change the channel. <laughs> yeah. Change the channel. This is for, this channel is for old guys anyway. What are you doing here? I don't know. There's a crunchy area right there, so I had to 
I don't know if you could tell, but there was a crunchy powdery area there. And it's not cortex, it's just the consistency of the stone. All right, so that's basically how I would rejuvenate that one. I got to move on because it's already 30 minutes. What is rejuvenate? It needs to bring it back to life. Yeah, this, this is now back to life. I can actually spruce it up with more thinning and some maybe serrations and some notches. Yeah. There's, there's my tool. Let's see what I can do with this one. I'm surprised I have this material here because it looks like the cow patty flint or chert. It's not easy to get anymore because. It's too close, or it's actually on Fort Hood. Too close to the fort, or actually on the uh, federal property. Can't get it anymore. Um, that's what I've been told. So, that's what this looks like. It looks like that cow patty chert. It might not be, it might be just something similar. I think that's what this is because it looks like it has some layers to it also layers which is not great uh, it seems to be napping easily relatively speaking whenever I use the word easily I have to I have to add relatively speaking because it's never really that easy anyway when it's napping easy it might be a heat treat Uh, again, I can't tell. It looks like it's not. But you never know. Especially with low heat. You don't get the glossiness in many cases. A lot of cases you do get the glossiness, but in many cases you don't. You, many cases for both? Yeah. Many cases for this or, or that. So. Yeah. I don't have to be all scientifical. On this channel if I don't want to if you if I'm just trying to give you a, a general idea of what's what's going on generally speaking it doesn't look heat treated yeah it feels like it could be heat treat but it probably isn't Oh yeah, I was watching a podcast. I try to watch uh, podcasts that make me sleepy, or screen some podcasts and see if it'll if it starts making me sleepy right away. I say, "Aha, this is good for sleeping. Save this one." Anyway, I stumbled upon a podcast where the guy was a, a remote viewer, where he could see places that he's never been to. And describe what's going on and even find people that are missing or spies yeah find spies find the spy where is he anyway uh, that podcast was very good sleepy material because the guy's voice was low and slow low and slow voice I can go to sleep as long as it doesn't sound psychopathic <laughs> There's some some voices out there that just give you the creeps because it's way too polished. It's and I, the only people I know that have extremely polished speech are the psychopathic ones. Yeah, I know it's it's stupid to think that, but it just I get creeped out by voices that are way too perfect. Anyway, this guy's voice was low and slow, and those are good for sleeping podcasts. Now, people use my videos for sleeping, too. I don't have a low, slow voice. Although I can slow it down. What's funny is if I modulate my speech in any way, it kind of distracts me and I forget what I'm going to say. 
So I gotta go with the flow and not try to modulate. Sometimes I'm a little bit hyperactive and I'll speak faster. Sometimes I'm not and I'll speak slower. It also depends on how much of how much in the zone I am or how difficult the material is. If I have to start being aggressive, I start speaking faster. If it's just an easy to nap material, maybe I'll speak slower. I think that's how it works. I don't I don't know. How how it works with me. Yeah. What well, gets me um, irritated sometimes is I will lose track of what's going on. And I'll I'll, I'll plan the sentence in my head and I'll say the first word and I'll, I'll skip some words in between and say kind of the last words in the sentence that I've planned in my head. Yeah, because it's hard for me to concentrate on what I'm saying while I'm saying it. I can hear what I'm saying while I'm saying it, but to focus exactly on what I'm saying while I'm saying it, it takes a lot of effort. I can do it. It just takes a lot of effort, and then I got to pause my napping and then you know, put some effort into paying attention to exactly what I'm saying it while I'm saying it. Just pay attention to exactly what I'm saying while I'm saying it. Okay. Anyways, I'm just yapping. Don't know what to talk about. Come on, you're, you're not that tough. Steel is really good at trying to get past these tough areas, but sometimes, holy moly. Now, sometimes I lose track of how I'm hitting the, the flaker. Like, if I need to, this is normally how I hold it. The, right in the middle like this. So it's balanced in the middle, kind of. I, I notice I, I do that. Maybe a little bit lower than... My finger's a bit lower than halfway, but if I really want to hit fast, I got to grip it down here like this and use the tip instead of gripping it just below center and using this this area a little bit like right in this area. So this is halfway between my hand and the end is right about there. I hit with this area up in here. Uh, if I really want to strike hard like right now, I should back down like this and then scoot back a little bit so I'm hitting with this part of the mallet. It drives the flake with much more speed and power if I do it this way. Instead of hitting it like that with my hand further up. So I got to back off and hit it with this. That allows me to increase the velocity of the tip. Yeah, so I can take off those kind of flakes. Nice. I still got to hit hard, but when I uh, extend, you know, basically extend the length of the mallet, there's more velocity at the end with the same amount of effort. Yeah, like that. Hit it so I can get those, those flakes to come off. Those anti turtle beckery flakes. This is probably raw, this chert, which gets me nervous because <clears throat> I don't know. Some people like the raw chert, but raw chert breaks on me a lot. Yeah, <clears throat> it's just really brittle without uh, yielding. It seems to break in in ways that I don't want it to break when it's raw. Yeah, it'll flake and it'll 
it's flexible enough to do that to you know to, to go down ridges but the whole piece itself a lot of times will snap under the strain of hitting it hard which you need to do when it's raw yeah it doesn't stand up well to being hit hard in many cases in some cases it stands up really well and that's when you can do a lot of neat things with, with the thinning yeah but if it doesn't stand up well to being hit hard and it's raw yeah you're in trouble okay Okay. Sometimes the edge does not stand up well to being hit hard. It'll crunch. Sometimes the edge contains concrete. So am I done refurbishing this one? No, because there's no symmetry. I've got to establish some symmetry. What I was doing there is I was trying to clean up this edge, make it reasonably thin, and now I can move on to this wonky side and make that reasonably thin and then we can get some symmetry going. Well, let's see. Let me take some of this down. Now that I'm here. All right, so let's see if I can... Thin this edge down, bring it back so it's symmetrical with the other side. When I look down to through the center here, I want it to be symmetrical through the midline, I mean. According to that midline I just showed you. And yeah, I'm random and chaotic. This is still thick down here. I have not taken care of that yet. Uh, sometimes it's because I, I forget. Sometimes it's because I'm distracted by something else. I mean, I know I should be doing it, and I remember doing it, but then I get distracted and say, well, this seems worse than that. But in general, I've got to... Come on. I've got to do the base thinning first. I don't want the blade to get too thin because if I do this when the blade is thin it snaps if there's any defect. Dun -de -dun 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 -dun. Oh, come on. I'm trying to make doo doo with the striking areas that I got. But I got it. Looks like I've got to prepare them a little bit better. Okay, let's see. I don't want to hit it too hard. I already feel like it's too thin up here. But that was a good strike. Ouch, that one hurt my finger. But I got it. Yeah, this... There's a, there's a little point on top here. I was I had my finger right there, and when the flake came off, it, it jammed itself into my finger. But it was worth it. Yes, yes. Does that mean you put pressure on it so it'd be supported? No, I just had nowhere else to put my finger except right there. If I if I could scoot it out of the way. A little bit more yeah I would have done it but I needed to have support yeah I just said I didn't need support I needed to have general overall support because you do need general overall support for the resistance of the strike not for support on the resistance of breakage 
but to resist the strike this can't be slipping like this you've got to have support to keep it firm when you're striking you can't it can't slip like that that's what i mean by support most people when they mean support it's like pressure on the surface for me support means enough friction to resist the strike i know that's going to be confusing but what else what other term can i use i could probably come up with something better yeah actually now that i'm thinking about it i can i can come up with another term yeah instead of support can i think of something else I have to rigidify. I have to rigid, make it rigid, rigidify it. So I'm rigidifying it so it doesn't slide like this when I'm hitting it. I'm not putting pressure to do pressure on the flake. I'm doing some firm pressure so it doesn't do this. Got it? I bet you some people go, hey, you never said that before. Maybe I haven't because I don't remember saying that before. Some things are just obvious to me, but it could make all the difference to you. And I apologize if I miss things like that. Yes. Just a little bit more. You know, I'm working on the symmetry, taking the back and using the the ticking back as as a uh, a way to make the edge better for sending in flakes that way. Right, right. I knew you would agree. Somehow you're always agreeing with me when I'm napping. Yeah, funny how that works. Yeah. You're not agreeing with me? Shame, shame. You need to agree with me while I'm napping, because if you don't, it sends out bad vibes. <laughs> yeah. Don't be sending bad vibes through YouTube. Yeah, but we are filming before we're even watching it, so how is our vibes going to do anything? They don't do nothing. Guys, you guys are too, you're too smart for me. That's true. You guys are too smart. Dang it. I can't fool anybody. Nope, can't fool you guys. Okay. Am I done with the rejuvenation? I think I am, but I, I think I also lost quite a bit of material on this one. I think what I was doing was, you know, when I was unturtle backing it or de turtle backing it or whatever, I lost a lot of width and maybe some length. Ah, the indirect percussion is so good. Yes, it is. If I do say so myself, it makes flit napping so much more enjoyable yeah accurate strikes with cooperative stone so enjoyable yeah one of the rare moments that you can find joy in flit napping is when the accurate results from your technique produce good flakes or the accuracy of your technique produces good flakes all right there we go let's take a photograph of our success 
Yep. I don't know if this is in the correct order according to the first thumbnail, but oh well. Do I have a first thumbnail for this or no? I just I think I took some photos before I started. Anyway. There it is. That's it.